Hello there, welcome to another video for Cody, who sent me quite a bit of stuff, so I'll do the best that I can. And back in 2013, um, wow, didn't think it was that long, he sent me all the Godzilla films which I reviewed, each one of them, which there's a playlist I'll put down below of my Godzilla movie reviews for those interested. And he actually sent me this. And he wanted my thoughts on this DVD. So this video won't be too long because I've already reviewed the film. I enjoy the Japanese version of Godzilla. I enjoy the feel, the dark feel, seriousness of it. I thought the black and white photography worked very well. I thought the actors did their jobs fine. The Japanese version definitely has some moments that are very creepy. Like the mom with her kids going, we'll see daddy soon. We'll see your daddy soon. And you the gist that their dad's dead. and She's kind of telling her kids we're going to die, but we'll be seeing your daddy. Like Moments like that, the Japanese version <coughs> had a bit of emotional impact. The, the American version, King of the Monsters, was not that big a fan of. And I reviewed both versions. Again, for those who want to check out, I reviewed all of the Godzilla movies. Except this one which I will be reviewing soon. <clears throat> but the DVD itself is a Criterion DVD, and I like the cover. Once again, if you want to hear more my thoughts on the movies or the versions themselves, feel free to look at those videos. But the DVD, I like the cover. I like the back of Godzilla with the flames and the destruction of Tokyo. I think that's a great picture. You have a booklet, which gives a little bit of analysis on what Godzilla means. Poetry after the A-bomb by J. Hoberman. Some nice pictures there. I will say I don't care for this. So you get the, the back and then the front. I don't understand why they chose this picture of him coming out of the water. There are many pictures you could have chosen. You could have chosen the famous picture of Godzilla among the power lines. The telephone power lines, how you want to call them. Or him in the middle of Tokyo. I don't under I mean, I guess because of his death by the oxygen oxygen destroyer in the water. But I don't know, I just it's just a weird picture. I don't even know if that's from this movie. This, though, I remember someone even telling me, and it's a nice that's a pop-up, but someone's like, hey, Matt, when I did my DVD update, that's not from this movie. And that's right, that Godzilla is not from this movie. It's from, like, Godzilla 2000 or some other Godzilla movie. I don't know which one. You know, let me know which one, but I don't know why it's not the Godzilla from this movie. So that's kind of strange. is a two disc set. The first disc is the Japanese version. The second disc is the American version with Raymond Burr. And the features, well first off, I like, I think this is a nice gift because I like the cover and I, the picture quality is good. It's Criterion, they usually do a good job with picture quality. So again, that's more than enough for me. The features, they're there. I mean, you do a commentary from David Collat, who's the author of this Critical History and Filmography of Toho's Godzilla series, book I've never even heard of. You can tell he's a fan of this movie. It's a bit emotional at times. Sometimes it seems as if he's doing a radio play. <laughs> That's how emotional he gets at times. And I don't know if this was the case, but it feels like one of those commentaries from historians where they're reading off stuff they wrote. Now maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it felt like. Yeah, it could be wrong. It was interesting. To, it's more analysis and insights about the themes, but it does give some insight about the time and why this stacks up against other monster movies. And also in the... He does a commentary on the American version. He tells about how 
dubbing at the time was not a slap in the face. It was something of affection because that means they thought your movie was deemed worthy enough. Because by dubbing it, that means they'll release it in more theaters. Because at the time, more people wanted a film dubbed than subtitled. And it would take effort, and they felt, well, your movie's worth the effort. So you get some interesting info. One thing I always forget is that in the American version, Godzilla King of the Monsters, a guy who does two of the voices is James Hahn. Maybe he does more, but at least sort of our two main leads, that's not Raymond Burr, is James Hahn, Lopan from Big Trouble in China. He's a voice on the American version of Godzilla King of the Monsters. He's the guy who is sort of Think about it. It's two guys and a girl. The two guys who like the girl. One's kind of the lead, but he doesn't do anything. One's the scientist who creates the oxygen destroyer. He's got, I think, the eye patch. Both those guys are James Hahn's voice in the American version. I'm like, oh yeah, I always forget that. That's, and he mentions it. Right, that's right. I always forget that. <clears throat> that's really cool. Lo Pan from Big, Big Trouble Low China. Guy was in this movie too. The Golden Child. It's one of those things, if you listen to the first 10 minutes of each commentary, you'll get whether you want to listen to the rest or not. I was fine listening to it. Usually, I'm interested in historians, because it's nice learning more about film history. Although, I will say the best guy to do that is Joe Bob Bruce, because he knows a lot of stuff, and he's fucking funny. So, to me, every movie should have a Joe Bob Bruce commentary, but that's just me. So the comedy was interesting. F at times again, maybe a little bit too emotional, as if he's doing a radio play, or it seems like one of those. It's more he's just reading what he wrote. I could be wrong on that. You do a couple interviews. You do get Akira Takarada, who is sort of the lead, at least more so in the Japanese version, who was in a couple other films. All of these are subtitled, and it was there, and I see you hear from him, tells about how he got the job, and how he thought he was a star, and then people said, no, Godzilla is the star, and how he thinks of Godzilla as his classmate, because they both started off pretty much in that film, and he seems very proud of the movies. If you did a 10-minute interview with Haru Nakajima, who is the man in the suit, which I think, I could be wrong, but I think he passed away, which is too bad. So it was nice to hear from him, the guy who was in the suit. And he was in the Godzilla suit quite a number of times. And he said he kept doing it because he liked the kids' reaction when they saw the movie. He talked about how hot it was in the suit and how he got in the suit and what he did with it and how he was fine with the heat because he was in the Navy and he would always have to run. They would never let you walk, so the sweating was... Just another day. <clears throat> uh, you do the interview with the two guys who constructed the suits. It was okay, but I don't know. It's one of those I, I don't know. I wasn't really interested for the full thirty minutes. I'll be honest. Same with the the fifty minute interview with the composer, and I like his music. But composer interviews are not really the most interesting for me to watch. Like, once in a while it's interesting. If it's a film I really, really enjoy, like John Carpenter or James Horner when he's talking about aliens and what happened with him and James Cameron, or if it, if it was Jerry Goldsmith, two of those guys no longer with us. But usually the composer interviews are not the most interesting to me, especially for 50 minutes worth. But I listen a little bit. It is nice to you know, see them and hear them talk about the movie. So I think for some, you would get more out of it than me. Me, I was like more fine just listening to the, the commentaries. There's also an interview with the, a critic who discusses how he pretty much talks about how Gojira was created and how it affected Japanese culture. It's about 14 minutes long. 
One I found interesting was an audio, like, photo essay where they just show photos with a guy describing the incident with the Lucky Dragon number 5, where it was a fisherman, that they were out in the ocean, they saw this big white light, and they're wondering, what is that? It's like a fireball from heaven. Later on, they found out it was a hydrogen bomb, because there were testing going on from the Americans. And they got affected, one guy got killed, and the Lucky Dragon number 5 story was the inspiration for this movie. I thought that was a really interesting story to hear. It's about 10 minutes long. Very interesting story. Sad story, but very interesting to hear. And that's pretty much the features. So, I mean, the features, maybe you do get all, you know, you do get a commentary on each one from a historian who knows what he's talking about and has a passion for it. You get both versions of the movie. You do do a couple of interviews with an actor from the film, a composer from the film, person who was in the suit. So, and you do do a little booklet. And I like the cover. Good picture quality. So overall, it's a good DVD. I'm glad to have it. I actually knew this was going to be a short video, so I was going to reiterate my top 10 favorite and least favorite Godzilla films. But you know what? I'm going to do that with the, for a different video. That way, separate the two. But yeah. I know Cody, one of my thoughts, and this is a pretty good DVD. So thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.